I'm honored today to be here with Seema Chaturvedi, the Managing Director of the Accelerator Group. Uh, and I'd like to hear from you uh, about what you've seen as the opportunities and challenges with entrepreneurs, particularly women entrepreneurs, uh, here in India. Opportunities are significant. This is a globally recognized fact. Empirical evidence supports it uh, that women entrepreneurs deliver higher returns on any investment made in enterprises that are owned and led by women. The, there were three primary challenges that we observed. Mm -hmm. The first uh, challenge that we identified was a significant um, prevalence of gender bias, but more importantly, the lack of recognition of the fact that it was gender bias. Mm -hmm. So if you can't solve a problem, if you don't recognize there's a problem. Right. We actually did role playing and we uh, made everybody understand the experiences that were shared between women from New York, from Colorado, from Miami, and women from Coimbatore, and women from Chennai. <laughs> Our solution, which, is, uh, which may seem small, but I think is meaningful, is to bring that spotlight on the issue and we have made that more tangible by launching a dignity pledge so there are 150 close to 150 50 signatures we've set mm -hmm. the target of getting it to 10,000 signatures and we'd like to present it to the leadership in the world and say mm -hmm. here are the women entrepreneurs who stand 10,000 strong behind uh, wanting to get equal treatment for women entrepreneurs so that was one the second was uh, the recognition of lack of capital uh, mm -hmm. or the access to lack of capital. Mm -hmm. So to that end, uh, we have launched a fund mm -hmm. uh, called Achieving Women Entrepreneurs Fund One. It's going to be a $25 million fund which will focus on early stage women owned and led enterprises um, in India. Mm -hmm. The third one that was recognized was the lack of capacity building, especially for women mm -hmm. uh, and especially in India. And we noticed that boys and uh, men intuitively are either exposed to experiences that oftentimes lead to development of soft skills. So I'm not even talking about the B school skill, the business mm -hmm. school skills of finance, accounting, legal, etc., etc. Those definitely would help with a diversity in. Um, in inclusion of, of thought processes, but I'm even talking about the soft skills. How do you mm -hmm. pitch? How do you network? How do you sell effectively? And we've noted that there's a significant lack of capacity building or skill building, specifically for women. <laughs> Airsv was a great project. We touched the lives of 125 women. Uh, a lot of them have gone forward and paid it forward by going and speaking at universities. One mentee just told me she spoke to 300 women uh, in a school that was for an all-girls college. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, uh, thank, thank you again to the U.S. State Department, they were very impressed with the impact that we created with our first round and we just heard uh, that we were granted round two of funding. This time, uh, being entrepreneurs, we are more ambitious. We have decided to touch the lives of 450 mm -hmm. women uh, from at least 30 cities in India by holding the same format of five workshops, but reaching out to women in tier two, tier three cities. Okay, so th this sort of skill building, the, the soft skills as you call them, are those best taught through mentors and mentees and then paying it forward? Absolutely. Uh, because there's really no textbook that can teach you how to network or how to sell. Mm -hmm. You know, the textbooks can teach you how to market. It, mentoring is all about somebody saying, I've seen the movie before mm -hmm. and I can hold your hand and tell you exactly what you can expect um, based on what you're getting in terms of responses. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's a huge help to uh, women entrepreneurs who are looking to uh, achieve the next step or to grow their businesses. If you just look at uh, just the impact that a woman can create, uh, my true belief is A, if you economically empower a woman, it leads to greater gender um, equality mm -hmm. um, because, and, and that has such a strong ripple effect. Mm -hmm. The second is as the primary caregiver of sons and daughters, a, they have a role model to look up to, and the behavior of the sons can actually change and evolve seeing a powerful, strong mother at home mm -hmm. uh, who's economically independent. So the impact can be multi-generational. Mm -hmm. So 
trying to empower a woman is in the interest of the entire country, not just in the interest of a particular woman. Of a particular business or a particular or, woman. Exactly. Right. Um, your visit here and your work here is particularly timely. Uh, this November in Hyderabad is going to be the Global Entrepreneurship Summit. Correct. Co-sponsored by the Government of India and the Government of the United States. And this year's theme is Women First, Prosperity for All. So your visit, your work with women entrepreneurs, make sure women entrepreneurs of the development of the economy, part of the development of entrepreneurship, are front in the development of entrepreneurship is particularly important. Absolutely. I think, again, a very timely focus uh, by the GES, and thank you again for the support. And thank you so much for your work here and for being with us uh, in India to help mentor and lead this generation of women entrepreneurs.